Sally Tierney, the owner of Clear Path Forward, an advocacy investigation firm in Virginia. And I love listening to the PI Perspective podcast because Matt interviews so many investigators that bring their unique expertise to the show. I've learned so much from them and look forward to every single episode. Thank you, Matt. The Campbell Group has teamed up with PI Perspectives to offer listeners top-notch, affordable insurance solutions. Private investigators can get insurance for their business for as low as $305 per year. Apply now at PIPerspectivesInsurance.com and receive a quote back within 24 hours. Do you enjoy our podcast and the guests we bring you? Since 2019, Matt and his team have done their very best to give you amazing shows each week. If you feel like our show has helped you to be a better investigator, or maybe even inspired you to become an investigator, please let us know. We're looking for testimonials. Drop Matt an email with a recorded 20 to 30 seconds of you talking about this podcast. You can also email him something verbal about the website. His email is Matthew S at SatellitePI.com. And if you really feel blessed for having this content, consider supporting Matt and our show by joining Investigators Toolbox. You really have to see version 2.0. And at just 49 cents a day, it's a no-brainer. Now let's jump in to this week's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. We hope you had a nice 4th of July holiday. Today, Matt is back with a new show. Matt welcomes Steve Villarreal from Pacific Research Liability. The guys discuss how Pacific Research can help you obtain auto insurance on personal injury cases. It's an amazing resource tool. Please welcome Stephen and your host, Private Investigator Matt Spare. And welcome everyone to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. This is Matt Spare, your host. Um, today, I actually have a special guest, somebody uh, I've been doing business with for a while, actually, and and, and I never actually met. And uh, he found Investigator's Toolbox <laughs> from on the internet, and we connected. I'm like, I think I know this dude. <laughs> uh, so I want to welcome uh, Stephen Villarreal to our program. He runs Pacific Liability Research. Uh, Stephen, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like a, a, it was a weird way that we actually connected um you had uh you didn't realize i was who i was right and i didn't realize you were who you were and we kind of connected the dots and said wow we actually do business together (laughs) i love it completely random coincidental and just shows the path as investigators we're on and and you're always trying to to put it out those resources, and I'm always looking for resources. So. Yeah, and you you have a you have a great resource tool also. So, I was out at the um, the Nally conference, uh, I think uh, probably about two years ago uh, when it was in San Antonio, and um, I was having a conversation with a, with a gal uh, who was attending who was from Seattle, uh, and uh, she was like, "Hey." Um, you should try using this company. They're, they're really good at, at getting insurance searches. So I do a lot of plaintiff uh, personal injury cases. That's kind of my background. And uh, there's always this quest on trying to find insurances that are related to a particular motor vehicle, right? So she had recommended that I try your sources. And, um, you know, you're one of a few businesses out there that do this kind of stuff. Um uh, and I was like, okay, I'll give it a, I'll give it a, a, a shot, right? And uh, man, it's been about two years now. We've been doing business, and uh, I got to say, like above and beyond uh, your competitors. So kudos to you, sir. It's a great product. Thank you. Yeah, I. Um, so I guess we can get more into my personal story, but right. No, I want to do that. Yeah, that we definitely want to talk about how you got into doing this. So actually, why don't we just jump into that, and then we'll come sure, back to good. the company. So yeah. you are a private investigator. Right. Um, but before that, um, before you started this company and and whatever, you had something happen to you. So why don't you, you give into uh, the, the backstory here? Yeah. So 2016, um, I was uh, an amateur musician, still am songwriter. And and I've been you know playing music and, and uh, doing that since actually high school. Um, and I. Uh, was coming back from a uh, gig. It was about two in the morning, playing the local bar circuit. So uh, you know, you you get out pretty 
pretty late at times. And uh, I was actually just driving home. I had in my little Saturn, I had a, a backseat full of, of uh, cymbals and, and musical instruments. And I'm just stopped at a red light waiting to turn onto my street. And uh, I was hit by an 18 year old drunk driver who had uh, just left a local bar, who had gotten on a fake ID and was uh, driving his parents' new Toyota Corolla. And uh, so my experience uh, firsthand with the you know civil litigation, civil matters is, is my own civil matter. And uh, I have, was able to model my business based off of what I saw was an imperative need Right. And that was to know how much insurance was there for me to treat my injuries. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, um, it's always an issue, especially in New York, um, more so in New Jersey, New Jersey's it's, it's a big time issue because their minimum for their cases are, is, is like 35,000, I think, um, you know, 15,000 slash 35,000. And for those of you who don't, know that lingo it would be 15,000 per person up to 35,000 per accident right so you're not talking about a lot of money um so there are times when excess coverages umbrella policies other household vehicles that have different insurance policies can come into play depending on how the policy is worded so like that's gold for an investigator if you can get that information to an attorney they know how to proceed with litigation right they they know how to strategize the you basically give them an ace in the hole because you know when their adversary comes back and says well there's nothing you say well check here's this policy and here's the policy number and let's you know sit down and really start talking now right uh so it really gives you an advantage um for for getting that information and and it's all above board which is you know important as well so well, and absolutely, uh, and it's it's such vital information. It's uh, what's sad is that it is not already information that's provided to uh, to the injured party, to to right. the representation of the injured party, yeah. and, and and the fact that it is an advantage that you know we are are kind of looking at from that perspective really shows um, just how much. Um, over the years that legislation has been introduced on a state level to really benefit uh, the insurance company and not requiring them to disclose that information when a claim is filed. Yeah, that's always been a mystery to me why it just isn't general knowledge. Like in New York, you can at least get the the company and the policy number. They, they won't give you the declarations. You have to actually contact the carrier for that. But at least that's something. I mean, there there are many states like Pennsylvania is another one where they just require you to show you have insurance when you initially register your car the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, there's no due diligence. There's no updating. Uh, so what happens a lot of times is people in New York will go into Pennsylvania, buy a car, register a car, insure the car, come back to New York, and then cancel the insurance because Pennsylvania DMV is never going to follow up to make sure that the car is continually um, insured, right? So yeah, that's a scam that's been going on for years, years, mm -hmm. right? And whenever you see a Pennsylvania plate involved in a motor vehicle accident, your first thought is, uh-oh, <laughs> like we're, we're going to have some problems. Red flag. Red flag, yeah. Um, well, and, and what's interesting to just kind of go off your point so there is a nationwide database uh, for companies that where they have to report um, their their uh, workers comp workers comp required by law, um, and so that's something that you can look up on the internet. Why? So why is there you know these these safeguards for injured employees? Mm -hmm. So that they know, you know how much insurance coverage there is available for them to treat their injury, injuries. They never ask to be injured. Right. Uh, well, what's the difference between a driver not asking to get 
Andrew, why in one circumstance are they privy to this information while in, in another closely related circumstance or not? It's very simple, man. It's called lobbyists who have the interests of insurance companies then they're trying yep. to keep you from getting that information, you know? And this is why, like, I'm a, I'm a plaintiff guy through and through. I'll always be a plaintiff guy, you know, like, like that kind of stuff is maddening to me. You know, you've yeah. got liability, you've got issues. Like, why are we playing games here on, on getting people that get rear-ended when they're coming home from a gig and did absolutely nothing wrong and now their life has dramatically changed, right? Um, that shouldn't happen, right? There should be, okay, nobody's arguing who is responsible now, right? We, we understand who is responsible. Now let's talk about the value of the case and, and, and coverages, right? It should be like that should, you, you would think that that would be the way things would work, but it doesn't. And it's frustrating, really frustrating. Very frustrating. And that is what I use in my openings. Uh, when I go to a trial lawyer conference, to a PI uh, conference, uh, that is my introduction, my 10, 10 minute speech. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not there to, you know, speak up our company and talk about how we're great. I'm here to, you know, I'm, I'm there to, my goal is to just point out these clear discrepancies in, in in the law that really just it's baffling it's yeah. baffling yeah yeah it, it it's is a challenge right it yeah. trying to connect the dots and trying to get closure on that and being uh, an investigator and, and having the ability to do that like you know i i feel like sometimes people in our industry like they don't share leads or, or at least it used to be that way they don't share information right so i was like super appreciative of this gal um, you know, giving me your information. And um, it's why I think investigators toolbox is super important where there's information like that out there. Um, you know, you had mentioned that there are some sites that, you know, you can go and find information if you know where to look for, right, for workers comp and everything like that. So like, like those types of, of um, sites that are free, like, you know, that, that's the thing the toolbox does. It, it just, it's a library for all those resources. So it's like knowing where to look for it and where to go is, is, uh, it's a game changer, uh, for you because I mean, you look like a million bucks. I, I mean, just recently I had a case that, um, Steven's, um, business helped me with, um, where, uh, it was one of these deals where, um, the company had, um, and this happens all the time, right? So, 18 wheeler company gets in a car accident. They're hundred percent liable. The driver, when they're at the accident, you know, he doesn't give a crap about insurances and all that. And he just gives a piece of paper that he's got in his truck, right. That has an insurance uh, policy number. It's got a name of a company and everything like that. And the officer writes that name down. He writes that policy number down. He does it right. So then the attorney goes and contacts that ins insurance company and they're like oh yeah well we used to insure that vehicle but you know it was canceled like two years ago so the officer at the scene never checked the the date of the validity of that particular insurance policy he just went off the card that was given to him and wrote that information on the police report right so now i got a client saying we got this huge case you know you know five hundred six hundred thousand dollar value of this case with no insurance right now because the policy number that was provided for this particular vehicle is a policy number that expired two years ago, right? So I submit my paperwork uh, through Pacific uh, Liability Research and uh, you put all my info in and you guys come back and you find the valid one, the, the, the insurance company that took over after the, the, the company that used to insure, right? Because these trucking companies, they change insurance companies all the time, right? So now all of a sudden I've developed that information and, and you know, that particular trucking company had like, uh, I think it's $750,000 or a million dollar coverage, right? So now not only did we find insurance, we found coverage that's going to actually cover the injury to the yeah. fullest extent. And I look like a million bucks to my client. They were like, I can't believe you you did. Like, how were you able to do this? Trade secrets, man. <laughs> <I'm not telling laughs> <you>. <laughs> 
Um, but it, you know, and that was, that was just recent. So like consistently over the you know past two years or so, I've been using guys like this stuff happens and you know, let's take the good with the bad. There are some times I run searches with you guys, you come back and there's no hit. It just happens, right? Sometimes you can't develop the information, but I, I would say the percentage rate is higher than some of the other companies that I've used before in the past. So you definitely got a good thing going. We just had a company meeting yesterday and so the 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 crux with doing an insurance discovery search is you have to confirm the unknown uh well that's that's the problem that's when when we are not able to produce a policy it comes back our, our the results as inconclusive because can we confirm that there's no policy out there well you, you can't you can't confirm that without a doubt uh but we can confirm that through our resources, we were not able to locate uh, a policy. And so therefore it's inc inconclusive. Inconclusive. Yeah. And stuff like that happens, right? Sometimes it's a, the VIN numbers off by one, the police, you know, when you wrote it down, you know, they wrote the wrong number down or wrong letter, you know, or maybe they read it wrong. Maybe the nine is really a P right. That stuff yep. happens all the time. It right. And that's a process over time and right. and trying to figure, okay, well, when this error, when, when this occurs, how can we circumvent it? Right. How, how can we stop having a wrong VIN number from taking our entire case and just, you know, making it inconclusive? Right. And, you know, just wildcard it out and try some other point data point. Let's see if we get somewhere with it, with a different data point. Right. So, yeah. and, and, you know, we're not here today to talk about the processes of how that happens. Um, you know, we're here to talk up, you know, just to, to bring light to the fact that you guys do this type of work. And, you know, it, it, like if you're an investigator that does personal injury cases, you should have a resource like these guys to, to do the, the, the search, um, you know, it as part of the services that you offer. And there's a premium to it, right? And it it let's also be clear, you gotta lay money out, right? You got you gotta give to get. So um, yeah. you know, and understanding the billing cycle on this should be a hit, no hit situation, right? It shouldn't be like, oh, I'm not gonna charge you if you don't get a hit, because there was actual work done, right? So Steven's talking about a process here of what they do, there's value to that, right? So we're obviously paying um, Pacific, regardless of what gets done here, you know, we're paying a, a minimal fee to start off with, right? That's gonna cover their search. And then, you know, and that's another model that I like, right? And when it comes back and you're able to develop information, then you get the, the remainder of the bill, right? Everybody yeah. will, right? At the end of the day, we can't expect anyone to, to put money down, you know, uh, on an internet website that you, you know, with a company you may not have not ever used before, you know, there, there has to be some trust there. And, and so for our part, we will really want to, to simplify the process and, and, and make it as easy and accessible as possible. So yes, with the insurance discovery searches, there is a lot of research and background um, being performed. And so for that, we require a, a non-refundable deposit, $75 for a cursory request, $150 for an insurance discovery. The difference between the two, they both will, if we find an active policy, you will get that policy to be able to file a claim. Right. Um, difference is, is the insurance discovery, it includes policy limits, we do an umbrella verification, uh, and both are actually supplied with, if they do come back inconclusive, because you did pay, you know, this deposit, we are obligated to provide you with that summary of findings. Yeah. So, so that, you know, hey, this can be offered to, to the uh, uh, plaintiff saying, hey, you know, this is everything we did do to search and try and find this policy uh, to offer coverage. And what we're finding is in, in multiple states, the judges uh, overseeing these matters really appreciate that prior to, you know, motions for, uh, for like UMUIM disbursement. Right. Uh, Un which, uninsured motorists, for those that don't know, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's a cool kind of um, 
uh, consequence. And, and then we honestly just started doing that because we wanted the process. We wanted our clients to feel like, all right, we, we got a value, you know, even though we didn't find a policy here, we have, you know, we have a paper trail. So one, um, one of the things that I appreciate on, on your reports like that, when we do get the no hits and you want to talk about value in, in getting what you pay for and everything like that, because we are, you know, let's be clear, we're marking it up, right? We're paying you guys and we're marking it up. Um, you find like prior information. Right. Used to be insured with so and so. It was canceled at so and so. Right. So it's like you're adding that little extra nugget. Right. So it's not not an actionable thing that you can go on, but it's something like, OK, I paid for this service. There obviously isn't anything. It is what it is. But I knew at one point there was something. So it just it leaves a better taste in the mouth. Like it feels less dirty <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that you're charging for something, you know, that you know, you've developed information. And that's, that's the thing that I always say to my clients, right? Uh, when they uh, initially engage us, right? I am not going to guarantee results. I'd be an idiot if I did. And you know, like that in $2 and 75 cents will get you on the subway for the time being in New York City, right? So it, it, it means nothing, right? But what I can guarantee is the effort, right? Mm -hmm. I'll guarantee you that we're going to, we're going to look down every you know hole that we need to look down. We're going to uncover every stone. We're going to do whatever we need to do. The due diligence will be there. Um, I just can't guarantee the result, right? So like by supporting that with a report from you guys that says, hey, nothing here, but this is some of the other information we developed. It just, it feels better, right? And it, and it looks better. So I, I'm a big fan of that. That is something that I noticed with your company that that sets it aside from some of the others that I've used, you know, and, it, and, you know, cause you do get that right. Sometimes like, ah, oh, well, there's, there's no hit. Okay. Well just can you give me a report or something that I can put in a, in a, a, a motion or I can exchange in court. Well, no, there's none of that. Sorry. You know, this is all like hush, hush. <laughs> you can't have it. Right. Um, it's just, and, I don't like that stuff, man. I like to no, be to not at all. Yeah. And, and what's really interesting is, is uh, especially with insurance discovery, we're trying to find a policy that's not previously known, at least with the you know information or databases we have. The way it, it, it works most of the time is, you know, as we're finding these past policies as we're finding you know some of this evidence that might help build a, a bigger broader picture of the financial disposition of this company uh that's how you find uh the policies is is to you know start the body of work and who knows with our service we may not have been able to find that policy that you needed but we may have provided enough of the, the the jigsaw pieces to that puzzle. Who knows if you may have a resource with another investigator Some, something else, might yeah. be able to plug that in. No, that's a good way to look at things, man. And you know, I, I always tell attorneys that you know they should be working with at least three investigators because we all have different resources and different things that, that that we do. But I think investigators should also be working with you know two or three different sources that they have they can't hold one resource as gospel oh xyz company couldn't find insurance that so there 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 must not be any insurance hmm. how about you do a little more due diligence <laughs> and maybe at least one more uh you know who's got a different way of doing things before you you can say like it looks like there's nothing there um exactly. and and there's also open source stuff that you can do to support that or refute it as well. So there's there's ways to do that. So uh, we're gonna take a break here. Uh, when we come back, I wanna uh, jump in and break down a little more of the difference between the three different searches that you guys offer. And we'll, we'll talk about some of the other uh, stuff you guys do uh, in addition to auto insurance, because there are other insurances that you look at. So everybody sit tight and we will be right back. Check out the PI Institute of Education at piinstitute.com. Since 1989, Kelly Riddle has been teaching on subjects such as surveillance, nursing home investigations, insurance fraud, domestic investigations, hidden assets, and accident scene investigations. The PI Institute of Education is a featured learning partner in the investigatorstoolbox.com. So check out the free content on the site, then visit the Institute for more great savings on additional classes. 
So we are talking about Crosstrax. Crosstrax is a sponsor for uh, Investigators Toolbox and PI Perspectives. We've got Steve Mason here. Steve's been a, uh, a longtime client of Crosstrax. Tell me the benefits of uh, case management. For me, it's basically being able to keep track of every single thing that's going on with the case, whether it's notes, documents, sending or receiving new case information you know because clients can create custom logins securing the data from a business perspective it's just it's really the easiest way to maintain your data to access your data anywhere I mean, you can be on vacation and pull up a case note remotely securely even just tracking how many cases you've worked for a certain client how much money you build them i mean it's there's so many tools that i just i really don't know how you can get by without a of case management system like cross tracks yeah definitely and they are SOC 2 certified which is important when you're working with insurance companies and and protecting information that's uh readily available there if you're looking to take your investigative company to the next level you got to be organized and the only way you're going to be organized is using a case management system and for me hands down Cross tracks is the one to go with. So again, they are a sponsor of uh, PI Perspectives and part of Investigators Toolbox. You receive discounts for using their services through, uh, through both those platforms. So check it out today and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Are you an investigator that can't find the time for research or are you stuck on a case that has given you issues? Satellite Investigations has a dedicated research team that specializes in skip tracing and defendant locates. Let our expert researchers use a balanced technique of research and pretext know-how to authenticate data and get you the answers you need. Contact us today by emailing us at newcase at satellitepi.com. And welcome back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. We are here with Stephen Villarreal from Pacific Liability Research. Uh, Stephen, welcome back to the program. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. Yeah, it's so great to have you on. Um, and who doesn't love talking about insurances and how to find insurance? <laughs> so hopefully we, we still have some people li listening to this episode. Um, but it is, it's it's important. And uh, it is part of the services um, that we offer. And, and it's more than just um, uh, vehicle insurance as well. So why don't you, you tell me the, the different types of um, insurance research products that you guys offer? So uh, the bread and butter is is, is obviously the, the personal auto policies. You mentioned New Jersey. And um, although I have not been there myself, um, uh, my understanding is there's quite a bit of traffic on the roads, uh, especially around the turnpike area. Um, so we do work with uh, a few law firms out of New Jersey, um, but essentially um, we work personal auto uh, policies, homeowners policies, and then commercial policies. Those are the three broad uh, uh spectrums of so, so by yeah. by commercial we're talking about premises liability in addition to commercial auto because those those are two yes. different things too yeah i stand corrected actually so personal auto and homeowners are, are not broad that's very singular uh commercial policies is where right. you definitely see a lot of different types of policies and coverages because that that is another pandora's box right so you have somebody who trips and falls in front of a building um, that's, that's owned by some commercial entity. Um, the lawyer starts a lawsuit, they serve papers, the company completely ignores any kind of paperwork and all that. And it goes into summary judgment. Now they're trying to collect on it or, or they have the ability to put it, to put in a motion for summary judgment. And they say, can you just look and see, maybe if we just contact the insurance company, they can, you know, we can get, start the process correctly right so there are two ways to do that right you can either go to the building itself whoever's management is and say hey we're about to take a summary judgment you know who's your insurance company sometimes it works and we we have had that happen but sometimes it doesn't right so you know the roundabout way to do it too is okay so go take a look find out the mortgage on the property um at the time the mortgage was taken they were required to provide some sort of insurance insurance information is not going to be on the mortgage, but a subpoena to the mortgage company for those insurance documents may work. It's a long roundabout wait. Hopefully they'll comply uh, way of doing it. But um, you know, sometimes it, it's, you need something a little more time sensitive. So having a third party like uh, like Pacific to, to jump in and do it um, could be a game changer as well. Right. Um, 
you know, absolutely provide that info. Well, and, and it's so when we first started offering these uh, this, uh, the insurance discovery searches, it was back in 2020. We were very new into the process, and and essentially why we started offering the services. And I had built up, you know, what that consists of, formatted it, you know, offered the pricing, advertised it. Uh, when we first started, it was a very low hit rate. So right now, um, this last week, uh, out of uh, close to 20 cases, we had a 54% hit rate. which that's, is, that's actually high. Prove it so people don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's really good. That's really Starting good. out, I want to say we're like around 18%. Yeah. Uh, it was really tough, and and um, that was because we were strictly going off of the recommendation of the attorneys saying, hey, I need this policy. Um, and so we would look for the policy they would designate. For instance, if it was a slip and fall, we're looking for, uh, you know, a commercial policy for the company leasing this uh, establishment. Right. Well, then we started getting into, okay, well, so, but that's just one liability avenue. Um, but who owns the complex? Right. Who owns it? Right. Who created that condition? Right. Is it something that was there for a certain amount of time? Um, it, was it something that uh, was more of a, on a permanent basis? You know, how, how long was it there? And that's all liability. And that's the lawyers get lawyering for that. But yeah, so another avenue to look down for sure. Well, yep. So then, uh, okay, so now let's look at who owns the complex. Well, there's another uh, uh, avenue of liability that potentially could offer coverage. Right. And started, and then a lot of that also is dependent on state law. Yeah. Uh, I believe Wisconsin has uh, um, a law where if they do not have auto insurance, they can actually um, still use an active homeowner's insurance policy sure. for liability coverage to cover other stuff. So um, we're just finding, we're, we're growing and evolving and finding these different resources. And then instead of just going off, pinging off of one policy that is recommended by the, the client, we're like, no, we're going to, we're going to search for every policy uh, available to yeah. your avenue of liability. And no, so that it's a good way good business. way to do it yeah it definitely opens things up and you can see why you would have a bigger hit rate and uh, again until you have that policy in front of you you don't know how what it's specifically written for like there are tons of of umbrella policies that you know they they leak over into um auto accidents you know mm -hmm. both on liability and 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 supplemental right depending on how the coverage is worded you know um you know, you could potentially put claims in on your own policy if the person doesn't have it, right? So that's another reason why a no hit is so important. And you think like, ah, crap, a no hit, like this is garbage. No, we're not gonna do it. No, it's not garbage. Because if you can show, you know, the underinsured motorists, like in New York, it's MVAC, the Motor Vehicle Accident Inde Indemnification Corporation, right? If you can show them that you've done your due diligence and there really is nothing else that's out there, well, now it's that much easier to get that MVI policy or to get that supplemental underinsured motorist coverage. You know, when you've shown we've exhausted every other potential insurance, now this is where we want to look and go, right? So it's all part of that due diligence chain. So when you understand that there's value in a no hit, that also makes you feel a little bit better about invoicing a no hit and saying, yeah, you know, <laughs> the research and, and, you know, I'm obviously marking it up and making a little something on it too. Right. So um, it, it's all part of the big picture, right? Speaking from experience, there's nothing more cringeworthy than writing an invoice for a no hit. And that's it. Yeah. No summary of fun. I mean, we did that for all about two weeks before like, okay, this is not working. Right. We need to, and, and, and it's, it's so frustrating because you'll never see more movement uh, policy-wise, insurance coverage-wise, than on a commercial basis um, with these, you know, huge corporations worth billions. And 
you know, you might see a, a corporate accident where someone, you know, an employee may have lost their life. And then the next day you see a cell, you know, of a company to, you know, a similar named company out of Delaware with an LLC. And it's, it's remarkable. The yeah, you gotta, you gotta pierce that corporate veil, man. <laughs> but in order yeah. to do that, you gotta be able to show due diligence. You gotta be able to, to, to show things, right? Yes. They don't have insurance with this particular company, but the, but this other company has insurance and they've got this policy, but at the time they used to be that company and, and showing that there's that, that conveyance, right? The not, you know, if you're conveying something with the knowledge of, of potential litigation, eh, it's a flag. You can't really do that. So and the only consistency that. that you can count on is that they will not, uh, the, they, as in the adjusters, the insurance company representatives, they won't tell you, Yeah, they won't tell you, Oh, you're looking in the wrong place or, Oh, if there's one thing wrong with filing that claim. Yeah. Rejected. Well, and that's the thing to understand, right? They don't have any souls, A. <laughs> and, and, and B, it's not about doing the right thing for them. It's about doing what's right for the shareholders. And it always will be. And Correct. that's why I don't do defense work. I, I, I sleep much better, you know, knowing that, you know, I'm, I'm working for people, you know, for people that have had horrible things happen to them, you know, yeah. and, and seeing the, the seediness of the other side, uh, of how it really is more of a bottom line than it is doing the right thing. Um, right. You know, it, 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 listen, that's just a personal choice for me there. I, and I know plenty of great defense investigators that are really good people and they make a living on doing this stuff. It's just me. I like to sleep at night. I like yeah. the, soul yeah, the way it is. <laughs> we'll keep, keep the soul shining. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. uh, you know, at, at some point, you know, we hope to see, uh, was it St. Peter, St. Matthew? Uh, what's the guy by the gate? Right, opening the gates, opening the pearly gates, right? Yep. <laughs> Cross. Exactly. Um, it, it, it's all good things. Um, you know, just, just understanding. So I, I, I did also want to cover the, the three different categories of the searches, just so folks understand. So there's discovery, there's cursory, and then there's another search as well. What's what's the the third one? Uh, so th this is our actual main service. It is the policy assessments. Mm -hmm. um, this is when you've already filed a claim um, in California. You may be waiting, you know, uh, a thirty a thirty day uh, delay in which the insurance uh, company is not required to to uh, disclose those coverage. Or you might be in Tennessee where the insurance company is never required at any point, even in litigation, to share policy uh, coverage. Uh, that's our, our, our bread and butter. Um, when, you, when you already have the insurance, uh, you know, based off of the crash report, you have, you have the insurance carrier name, policy number, um, and then we're able to use our resources to uh, go in and find what the policy limits were on the date of loss, cross-referenced um, through our policy and procedure and, and, and finally checked through our quality control team because we actually have three employees that will review every result prior to be being sent back just because it's so important to get it right, right. the first time. Right. And then um, also finding umbr umbrella policies as part of that search too, because I know that's something I use. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, the, the the ethos behind behind the company is really hey let's just be the one stop shop for just insurance we'll stay in our lane with everything else investigative um, and we'll just we'll make sure that we have all this covered so with each uh, a policy limit policy assessment search we actually do an umbrella verification uh automatically we'll check to see if there's an umbrella attached to the policy uh that you provided and if there is we'll we'll let you know uh if if it you want to purchase it if your client has some serious injuries and you know you're thinking that you're going to need that information we'll we'll then sell the additional money uh, the additional policy number uh coverages all of that $85 but that's completely optional uh some some injuries are not that serious it's not going to go that far so 
we always yeah. leave that completely to the discretion of the client. Yeah, I think it's it's super important for an investigator to know all the different types of searches that are available because, like, we should be selling that to the attorneys. Oh, do you know that we could do this search also and that search also? So, like, another example, you have um, a defendant who um, they send out an affidavit to their insureds, you know, that they need to sign stating they don't have any other insurance. You know, there's no other insurance available, right? So nine times out of 10, they'll send that affidavit out with either minimal instructions or no instructions at all. Just sign this, right? Docu sign this and get it back to us, right? We're not even going to tell you what it is. It's just part of the, the thing, right? So, you know, they won't read it. They'll sign it. And then, and then now you have a signed affidavit, notarized affidavit saying there's no other insurance. I, I can't tell you how many times that the attorney has hired us say, you know, I just want to take a look just to make sure that there's nothing there, Right where they'll run a search and we'll come across and find another policy. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey man, like seriously, <laughs> you know, you, you're going to do that. Right. So just understanding that there's that search available. Um, a, another testimonial, another uh, recent um, finding that we had, that was a huge home run too, is I had a, um, an accident here in New York involved a vehicle that had uh, not just out of state plates, but out of country plates. Right. So we had a tractor trailer that, that was from Quebec. Right. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to Stephen. I said, Hey, you know, can we do anything here? And he's like, eh, challenge accepted. Send me this thing. Right. So he gets it over. And sure enough, he was able to find a, uh, an active policy. And my, my client was like floored. They're like, I can't believe you, 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 you made something out of this. Like we were ready to just, you know, give up on it. I was like resources, man. Um, so the ability to do that. And I've had situations with you guys where I've had the policy number, but uh, not known who the company was, where we were able to connect the dots. Uh, it's a little more difficult, but there are times where on an MV 104 in New York, anyways, that's a police report. They'll put the VIN number down. They'll put down a policy number, but they won't tell you who the insurance company is <laughs> there. And they're not required. Which to me is another, like, I can't believe this, that there's no, they wouldn't fix that, right? They're required to put a code down for any in-state insurances, right? So there's a, a a whole code that, a three-digit code that, uh, you know, all the insurance companies have their own codes, right? So they're required if it's a New York State vehicle. If it's in, like New Jersey or any other out-of-state vehicle, they're not required to put any kind of code down. Even if they had, like, progressive but it wasn't New York progressive. They're not going to write that number down on the plate. Right. So there have been instances where I've had the policy number and had the VIN number, had the person's, you know, pedigree information, but didn't know who the insurance company was. I've sent it out to you guys and you've come back with the actual policy. That, that was an easy, easier one too. And, and it, this is just the results of, of doing things right, you know, and, and sticking with it over years, you know, specific liability is processed over, 30,000 attorney requests, attorney and PI requests. That's amazing. And, yeah. and so at this point, we now have all of the different formats of the policy numbers that the carrier carriers use. So with that, we were able to just kind of just check our library and be like, hmm, what what is what is CABA? You know, the Mercury commercial and and so that's that's just you know from from working in the industry and just being consistent. No, that's great. Listen, uh, yeah, and there's value to that, right? So don't apologize yes. for that bill. <laughs> Gladly paid. Um, no apologies. No, I'm glad it was easy. You want you want to you want to lay up every now and then. <laughs> you know? Yeah, layups are fantastic. <laughs> layups are fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. So just you know, understanding that and understanding the importance of it. Um, we're going to wind down here. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on and Pleasure. chatting about this. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there are plenty of people still listening because, you know, this is like important stuff for yes. us to know that we can actually provide this service to our clients. Like investigators, if you're listening out here, you should be marketing services like this, whether it's Stephen's company or whatever. Like you, you need to know that the searches are available and that we can do them and, and you should be selling them and, um, you know, reaping the benefits. It's, you know, those are good markups because there it's information that you got to know somebody to do it. Yeah. So, you know, it's justifiable to, to mark it up to a good rate. So Stephen, if folks wanted to get a hold of you or they wanted to check out the website, give me uh, both info. 
Absolutely. Um, so uh, telephone, you can reach us uh, between the hours of Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Mountain Standard Time, uh, area code 310-893-9178. You can leave a message and then you can always find us online at www.pacificliability.com. Awesome. And we'll have all that information on the in the show notes for folks. Um, you know, you can always just go and access um, on there. So, highly recommend these guys. Um, like I said, it's been about two years um, that I've I've been using their services, and you know, their their hit rates for auto. I got to say, and I'm I'm not going to hold you to a number, but I can say they're better than fifty three percent. So better than eighteen <laughs> percent. There we go. Um, <laughs> Thanks again, everyone, for checking this out. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week on uh, our next episode. Take care. Thanks for checking out this great episode. Give Pacific Research Liability a call and start using their service today. Tell them you heard about them on the podcast. Thank you also to Campbell Insurance Group for sponsoring our show. Remember to tell them you listen to save $50 when you apply for insurance. Additional thanks to the PI Institute for Education, Satellite Investigations, and Conflict International for sponsoring our show. Also, don't forget about investigatorstoolbox.com. You can type in version 2.0, 25%, to save $50 when you join. If you have a question or a comment about the show, just email Matt at Matthew S at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We want your feedback to bring you the best shows possible. And we'll be back next week with a new show. So make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.